Anyways. Fan seems a little bit more unusual. Uh, one of uh, two's comfort heroes, he played it yesterday actually versus them. I actually looked through his, through his previous games, he's played it formation of this Cloud9 team. Uh, he's got AMs, AMs, all of, like, oh, actually only one PL, and then there's four Spectre heroes. Really? Four, times he's, four. four times he's played Spectre. Wow. I didn't know it was that frequent, but yeah, yeah they really like the hero. Just basically Spectre, Animage, and one Rando Slark. That's all he's got. Yeah. Now Cloud9. Kinda wanna see what their combo is gonna be. Like, do they throw something in with the Tusker? Is he one of these heroes when you... Like, I, I love seeing him as, as an offlaner. But when you put him as a support, do you always feel like you got a lot of options to combo with, uh, with the Tusker? Mm, he's like, uh, he's okay for just kinda like sitting around mid and helping out. He's pretty strong, like, on his own. Just kind of like roaming around, like he can mana purse other supports pretty well. So you use him more like an Earthshaker. Kind of, yeah. He's a he's like a not as good as Earthshaker, but in my opinion. But some people are just like really good at the hero. And example, like a like in TI C deck, the um, I don't know his name was Garter, maybe. Yep. He uh, his his tusk was crazy good, and it was like. I, me I remember his shards, like, there was... Yeah, exactly. Like, so, we tried so, to fight. so many fights. On, on, I, I was actually in your, your game against them, where they... Yeah. He, he got, like, two perfect shards when you guys tried to fight around Bottom Rune. Yep. And you couldn't I go couldn't anywhere. <laughs> I know, he, like, split us up. We were just, like, half on one side of the shards, half on the other, and... Totally ruined our team fight. We were just like, alright, never giving this guy Tusk again. Too good. And that was a crazy game. That was such a crazy game. Yeah, some of those... A couple of those games are pretty crazy. Yeah. I can't. One where I was dying for like the first time of the tournament. That game was insane. I'm interested to see if C Deck can repeat what they've done. Ti. I, I'm wondering if if they are going to be looked at as like the one trick pony. Because they're, oh. they're, they're going to come to e they're coming to ESL One New York. They will be there for the final. Oh. Like, I hope we don't play them first round. <laughs> well, I hit, well, just so you can see what they bring. So you got time to uh, analyze yeah, them? Yeah, give me some time to adjust, you know. Um, I needed I needed the I needed that loss in the winter, bro. You seem to be a great team like that. Like like the longer yeah. the longer you have in tournaments the better. Like we saw the same thing at DAC, then we saw it now at TI five. And like a miracle that we've gotten to the finals at every ESL, even though we've never won. But second place, you know, single elimination, not too bad. Um, Anyways, we have Doctor for one four three seven, Skyrath for AUI. Control. Good initiation, like the clock and the storm together to jump. The only thing we're missing now is their number one hero. Unless they run the storm as a safe lane. Yeah, I'm waiting for the Bloodseeker. Dragon. Pretty sure it's really good. Okay. Dire team ban. Is this is this a pickup from Cloud9 to try and deal with the weave the Dazzle brings? Or at least make like these mid ganks a little bit harder? Close. I mean, he's got a lot of armor, but... I mean, Weave is pretty good at removing the armor. Uh, Ten seconds. I think they just want to force fights and push early. Five seconds remaining. Okay. They'll still go back for like a really hard carry though for Ritsu. Time. If they're gonna force a fight and push early, they're gonna need something more like a Luna to try and force that. They might Luna. That would be a pretty good option for them. Uh, make would make their five man really bloody strong. Yeah, Luna's really not that bad here at all. Because what else do you force down towers with? You're not going to be picking up or into a Storm Spirit game. The nice thing about Dazzle is like, it's sometimes your physical damage carries have a hard time getting anything done because there's so much armor on your opponents. But, um, you know, Luna's got a good mix of magic damage and physical damage in the late game. So, yeah. he kind of fills that spot. Kind of buffs everyone up too, so yeah, even with the physical damage, you don't got that amplification. Someone's not caught by the weave, or yeah, it's nice. It's nice. Cloud9, they have the choice if 1437 wants to take it. Last hero for Digital Chaos, the number one position. I steal the Luna. Would you, would you want a Luna though up against the Darks here? Uh, honestly, I don't think it'd be that bad because you have Dazzle to heal your wave. Also, you have Dazzle and Skyrath, who are probably both going to commit. Do uh, 
um, uh, keeping the darks here zoned. It's, so. it's just the harassment I think of, because whenever I think of Luna, I just think of yeah. someone who's actually up on a mount but can't have a range. The range is oh, so yeah. pathetic. That's true. It, it is hard to deal with ion shells, but the way they're looking at like a very strong trialing. They might be able to just like zone the offlaner entirely, maybe Tyrico jungle. Okay. Oh, digital chaos. I make your choice, boys. Like 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 but for Cloud Nine or DC? DC. Mm. I really disagree with that. Like it's, it still looks like it'll fit the lineup. Yeah, it's pretty good. It links really well for Starks here. Also, in like many phase, you can put the um, called the Enrage or something. Yeah. The, the the damage like increase thing you can put on Skyrath, and he can like zone with his chain missiles. Can Ten seconds remaining. Can bolt. Yeah. I'm actually trying like to remember the name of it. It's Blood Rage. It's Blood Rage. Remaining. Blood Rage. Sorry. Yeah. And That's you're right. Go. Yeah. And boom. Blood Rage. Blood Right. And first. Yeah, I like it. Good pick. Oh, Cloud Nine. <laughs> they may have seen this one coming as well. And is it, it, can you can you actually get away with someone like a Luna up against Bloodseeker? Where you just like uh, you yeah. just like stop on a dime and turn a fight. Yeah, I think Luna's pretty good. She's one of those heroes that just has to you know eventually just turn around and man up. And if if uh, he has the Blood Rage on, I'll die instantly to Luna. All. Also go BKB really early too. If Bloodseeker goes um, Mel. Either this or. Reserve time. And again, no, I'm actually really happy that Witch Doctor's on the field. I was thinking you need someone with a little bit more heal because if you drop below, that Bloodseeker just has an absolute field down his lane and they go for a, a Phantom Lancer, in fact. A little bit more difficult for Digital Chaos to control considering they don't have as much AoE this time around. Yeah, that's true. You got way less AoE. Clockwork's pretty bad versus PL for the most part. Dazzle and Skyrath are both, you know. Pretty weak. Um, if Skyrath has a really good game, he can be very effective versus PL. But once PL gets like Manta with Defusal, it's pretty hard for Skyrath to really do anything against that hero at all. Yeah, it's, I don't know. We'll see. I think Brax is going to have to carry them through the early game, them out of the uh, make sure PL can get online in time, and then TC and Storm are going to have to be. Dealing with the PL, remaining. keeping him down, because I think late game, uh, C9 is going to have a big advantage in the PL. Yeah, I agree. They're going to get really tanky. The team fight's wonderful. In fact, even digital chaos going up into the tier four, ta into the tier three towers, is going to be really difficult. So they need a good start. But they're in their comfort zones. You got Skyrath Mage for AUI, Bulber on Clockwork. Can't have much more comfort than that. I don't know if TC is perfectly comfortable on a Bloodseeker. Oh, I'm sure he is. This hero it plays itself, right? Yeah. Well, I don't know about that. Bastard. Right click people. <laughs> nah, it's. it's not, are, are you saying if you can't play a Bloodseeker, you can't play any hero in Dota? <laughs> uh, I mean, there's definitely skill difference. In other people's Bloodseekers, and that's true. But definitely very true. If you can't last it, then you might be in a little bit of trouble getting that early exactly. hand of Midas. Yeah, it's easy to last it with the Quelling Blade and Blood Rage on. Uh, you see that there's, there's ways that people like myself who are slightly lower skilled uh, can play. Like I just get dry range, get to level six, and it's almost impossible to screw up a uh, a last hit. Like, it's actually it's physically impossible unless you don't attack. That's the only other way. Actually, I'm, I really miss the drone. Whatever happened to drone? Why is drone not picked? Luscar. Um. Up, anti mage. All the range closing guys. PL. Yeah, <laughs> there's yeah. a lot of problems with that hero right now. We, but, we, we need know. we need Gus to go through immunity. Yeah, maybe. We got a patch coming up, so we'll see what happens. And I, I'm interested to see what comes in that and when it comes too. Of course, everyone is. Question right now. Yeah. Like where where's the nerfs? Where where are they gonna come? Storm's gonna get some level of nerf. I was talking about this with Ryu. Where currently oh. we're we're in the age of in, of intelligence heroes. The uh, they actually mixed up the match. They put Bloodseeker mid, Arith here to help, and then Storm in the safe lane with Dazzle. Bloodseeker should have no problem with uh, with the DK. Were oh, they? Yeah, Great. 
And with AUI just spamming out these orbs, this is the same time as where Dragonite was hoping for for a little bit more like space to spray out his his brief his uh, brief fire. But he's already got his bottle, so yeah, Price will uh, play catch up fairly easily. I don't know if I like this too much, but maybe they expect us to kind of help mid, and they don't want their storm to get messed up. Tusk actually just moved to the, towards the top lane, and they get rid of the Obs Ward instantly from DC. I was just on the edge of it as well. Yeah, it's okay though. They thought it was only ward, but this camp is still blocked. That's the reason why they double warded it. They put a, a ward on the left side for like vision and also blocking the camp, and then they put their other sentry on the right side, which still blocks the camp. Yep. So like right now, this guy's pull the camp. So, like this is something you can do with Dark Series. You push your lane up into the tower, and then you pull the side, and then you get you know the experience and advantage kind of a thing. <laughs> I love that from Brax. AUI was coming down for the bottle snipe. He may not have, may not have thought it was uh, coming at us early. DK as it did. But uh, the bottle's already made its trip. I should also tell you too, we, we du I double checked. It is in fact Savage. I checked with the man himself. He's fine with SVG or Savage. Savage. I like that. It's, it's, the, it's the epic names. But I, was, I was never quite sure with like, because I know it's AUI. That's how you meant to say his name. I always found that so boring. So I was like, it's like Aoi 2000. So mm. quick. I always call him Aoi in person. He, I don't think he really cares either way. It was no, like, no. it was like Kuro. Like ev everyone was like, man, it's Kuroki. And then like, like he admitted to me one day, it's like it was actually meant to be Kurokai. But everyone called me Kuroki. Everybody's got weird names, so it, nobody's it, too picky. Yeah. It's self-made. Like, unless, unless it's, like, meant to be, like, it actually has a physical world property name yeah, that someone true. else has already had, and it was meant to be pronounced a specific way. And, yeah. It's like a Vost. Not everyone pronounces his name correctly, and when I first said his name, I, I called him Xbox. Yeah. Sure. I, I couldn't find a better way to say his name. Like, it's actually taken time being here in Europe to get used to using different parts of, of, of like, my vocabulary to say words. I was a lazy Australian. Okay, right. so let's see how people are doing. Everyone's doing relatively well. I think Dragonite's doing pretty well, considering the circumstances. Clock, clock's gonna be really happy. He's actually finding levels like Bulb is not getting zoned out by one four three seven. It's pretty hard to zone out a clock. We'll always just pull the pull the wave back with his cogs. Like your pull time. That wasn't blocked for one four three seven. But he also rotated. Like he didn't spend all of his time down here. They yeah, made a more, they made a play on mid to try and kill off TC. More focused on uh, zoning rather than pulling. But he might pull on this next wave. Nice to do it. Timing's right. Careful of the courier. Savage is... He actually doesn't have enough speed for it, but that's got two boots in the bottle. On the courier. There's no way you want to lose that this early on. Yeah. Uh, it'll end up delivering it in. It was fine. I don't even know how, like, this dual lane's meant to add any pressure. This, this is the question I had before. Like, like, what does the Tusk guy do? Like, he's roaming around, but it doesn't feel like he's got any... real presence when it comes to the laning phase. Uh, we've actually been up against this dueling before, and we kind of... It's kind of... it's not very good. But what they're trying to do is just make sure Tusk doesn't get too far behind and get some levels, and is able to have an effect in the in the mid-game. But that's not really why you pick Tusk, usually. Huh. So that might that might come back to them, I suppose. You, you turn him in, into more of a leech, instead of going for something like maybe even Sanky, exactly. where, you can, where mean, you can farm the jungle or stack the jungle. That's true, that's kind of what he is doing, he's just leeching for now. He at least is able to prep up a triple stack for DK. Who is prioritizing the points up in Breathe Fire, so he's got three points up in that. So he's going the old, uh, the old Illidan build. One point for uh, Breathe Fire, stats, and... I don't even know. Oh, was that the Illidan build? I thought he, I thought he did that with the, with the Chikira. I think I thought it was... I thought it was Dragonite. I, I, remember, I remember the Illidan build where he uh, he didn't go a single point up in Ice Path. He went four points dual breath, uh, four points up in, in the Liquid Fire, 
And now, nice little snowball. That sounds nice. Wonder where it's going. Hopefully, uh, it'll be <laughs> Nope, he's going to TC. They're underneath the tower, and Bragg still has the rupture on him, so he's still dying. He'll get the sun on TC, but he won't have time to get away. AUI will take the kill, and again, DC open up with first blood. Yep, small mistake there. Could have gone to the creep wave, probably would have lived. Lucky. He might have thought the TC would hang around a little bit longer. The TC read it. They backed up. And what a good start. You already get that, that kill off on, on the mid solo of Cloud9. Yeah, anyway, I got the first blood too. It was worth a lot of gold. 500 gold, so... It's actually not even, um, it's not for Brax to catch up with the stack, it's actually for MSS to get further ahead. I think it's good. He just took out the big stack. Yeah, Dragon and I could do it eventually, just like spamming Fire Breath, but... Way easier for Darks here just to clear it. Yeah. Is it worthwhile though? Like, I, I would have thought that maybe 1437 should have moved down with him. Closer towards having that death, what, have some level of, maybe. like, aggression when it comes to these kills. Levels on Darks here are pretty important. He could have done it, but being okay on levels, level four, seven minutes, four and a half, it's not too bad. Everything's pretty level as far as levels go, but it's Bloodseeker is the one who's obviously going to be ahead. Like he's seven and a half, and they're taking care of a stack right now. Warner should be a little bit careful about the aggro he takes. They're still finishing the job. Out, out, they've. <laughs> They haven't done it yet. They've still left a whole bunch of creeps here. Yeah, he's got to kill the satyrs too because they regen everyone up. Ah, uh, but he's got no mana for it. Like, he's got arcane boots in the moment. He's good. Okay. For the job. It's still a little bit longer than maybe he wanted to really commit to this. They bought space for the space for the dazzles. Now dazzles, like like who's really gonna stop him? Like Tuscar can snowball in, but dazzles got shallow grave as great. well as as well as heal bomb. It's Fine. Yeah, he'll get some good farm up here too. Maybe get his own mana boots. It's always one of those things that I love watching with teams where you you make sure that you're like you guys did it so much with fear. Now you get him any hero with live steal. Like, yeah. Pick him up the more muscles. Yeah, send him to the jungle and then your and then your supports. Now you don't have to play a six position support. You can actually play two fours because of it. Yeah, it's pretty much the only way you can um Effectively do these kind of like try lines now with like two supports like Skyrath Dazzle. You kind of have to send your um, core into the jungle early and make space for at least one of them to some items. Yep. It's just a nice little play. Uh, I also want to uh, just give a shit like well, well we got ourselves a moment. It's a it's a very passive early game and a lot of it's just a lot of farming for now. We might get some kill potential later, but it's just farming stacks. Uh, just want to say, uh, greetings to everyone who is tuning in, be you inside of Dota TV or not. Uh, we are streaming out ESL, but Join Dota's pumping out two streams tonight. We've got App and Durka over in our, in our big studio doing the defense. It's one of our, our projects as well, which is back. Uh, should be a fantastic event. We're only in the first state, first phase of the group stage. So definitely go check that out. If you're, uh, dual twitching tonight, we're on Twitch for both of the streams. So, share the dual Twitch links and, uh, tune into both. Are you doing defense on land this year? So De uh, we will have a land final. Gotcha. But we're doing. Uh, but we uh, we tr we uh, we took the advice. I actually, say I was the one that designed the system. We, we, um, where teams didn't want to play as much online, but we still needed a way where we could have some online games. So we actually do a two-phase uh, online portion. So we yeah. have uh, twelve teams to play in the first phase of the group stage, and six seeded teams into the second phase. So we have three teams qual qualify from each group to go into the next phase, and then we'll do our LAN. Details to be released sometime soon. Cool. Yeah. But Germany? It's... Soon! I said soon! <laughs> soon as in, like... There's, there's no official announcement. I, I don't know. It could be Germany. It could be Slovenia. You never know. <laughs> Probably Germany. <laughs> We'll, we'll make it a paradise for Dota 2. Germany's nice, man. Germany is really nice. We actually hosted the D2CL finals here in our studios, too. That was... That was a little crazy. <laughs> Alright, game resumed. Yeah, let's let's get back into the game. So, 10 minutes in. One sneaker still looks, doesn't look like he's being controlled at all. The clockwork, like, Bulba's got level 6. Is this our rotation time? Is this now when DC say, okay, 
We have a Storm Spirit up at level eight and a half. He's got really good money and on his way to a Bloodstone. Get a quick pick off with him in combination with Bulba. Is is this the plan? I don't know. I feel like they're farming so well. They just keep farming. It just keeps stacking and farming. And, sure. But then Cloud Nine, like they're okay, they're actually doing something. They uh they're gonna three man smoke up. And they're coming with MSS one four three seven and Brax. And this is yeah, this is actually what I was waiting for for one four three seven is the death ward. It's the time when they can actually have enough damage to find a kill. Oh, you see that? It's that Audi two thousand ping. Ping this on jungle. He knows what's happening. The uh, classic TI five play from uh, Radiant. Your hero smoked enemy jungle. Drop down a ward. Check out the stacks. Maybe go get a kill. And then hopefully take a tower. Well, unfortunately for. Uh... Even with the ping that came out, there yeah, is in a lot of that. trouble because they just rotated all the way through the jungle up to the top. Don't even need to commit the death ward, but it, it ensures a kill for Brax, and he can TP back to mid lane when he's ready. At the moment, they're just giving it to Tasca, who found his level six as well. I think they'll just go for the tower. Looks like Storm's gonna go for the kill. Like he's jumping in on Savage, goes a little bit deeper, and there's the seal from AUI. But Tusk had a lot of one charge up his sleeve. Needs a snowball to protect himself, and he went to water. So he's up the hill and gets the wall as punch water. Actually, the shards gonna lock him in, so he commits into Savage. The paralyzing cast will not bounce, and well, there's not enough mana for a death ward. The stuns won't get in range. The malediction kill won't work, while Bloodseeker kills the Darkseer on the bot lane. And water has enough regeneration underneath the fountain to survive. It was so close. The, the fire breath hit, and then that lance was incredibly close to landing. Uh, it would have it would have been great for them if they got it, but they lost out too much. Like they lose Tusker, they lose Darkseer. Yeah, it was a nice play by uh, Water on the storm. The regen rune he used it really well. He got a bit unfortunate because he didn't see the snowball coming from the low ground. Cancelled his regen, but they still got the kill. And that, that just keeps like DC in front. They're actually two and a half thousand net worth in, in in front at the moment. And with those kills, they're pushing towards 2k. And TT's Minus having a great secret. time. Yeah, he's yeah. he's got that so early on. He's already got another 1100 gold. And we're only 12 he's minutes into the game. He's level 11. Just Bloodseeker things. No one else is even close. No one else is even level 10 yet. It's kind of funny that this hero still keeps popping in and out of drafts. There's so many big heroes you can go for, but now they're going to try and have a crack at him. So Snowball in, going to get that Malediction right with the Paralyzing Cast, but a hookshot from Bulba, going to cancel the Death Ward. It never even got time to channel. Nice timing from Bulba, make sure TT stays alive. And now he actually wants to go for more, having that Hatred Lenu coming close to the Mystic Flare from AUI. They just lock 1437 in a pit of death. And this will be the T1 Tower on bot lane. Please, man. Playing so well. They're just moving so perfectly across the map, and, and a, the oh. timing for runes too, like to get a haste rune like that, getting yeah, Bulber into position. That would have been such a big kill for C9, but... but... Now, C9 try and go for, again, the Dazzle. He's the only man from DC that's died so far, but with Bulber returning to the mid lane, they're not sure about going on anything. Oh, his Blade Mail's actually looking pretty good for his timing on it. Yeah, he's, he's farmed. Burrier's making space, you know, he, he may die, you know, once or twice, but he's keeping the lanes pushed out, so that way... Dragonite can't go get any towers. <laughs> They're about to jump again. Storm Spirit's coming in, that DK is so low, and Storm's just gonna ball lightning right at the top. Is the Bloodseeker gonna find the kill? But he's got high movements because MSS is dropping low. Not enough to dive underneath the tier 2 tower, however. We have to keep remembering about the PL. This PL is still farming up top, but is his impact going to be enough when Storm Spirit's about to complete a Bloodstone? So he's yeah. good enough to jump after him. It, it's a pretty good. It's it's not. It's an okay PL game, but you know if his teammates aren't doing well, then it's going to be really hard for him to kind of do things in the mid game when Bloodseeker and Storm are so farmed. Even like Arif is getting pretty farmed. Dazzle's doing really well. Clockwork, you know, like we said, has like a really early blade mail. So pretty much everyone at DC is doing relatively well. Storm and Bloodseeker doing exceptionally well. And then it's kind of only PL from C9 that's forming. Dragonite's gonna be become quite the burden, I think. Yeah. Okay. Probably just look for a, a blink dagger this game and try and catch Storm. It's one of those times when you kind of really wish you still actually had the like the you had the Luna pick instead of the PL. So you can force down lane so the, the DK can have a little bit of extra damage in the fights when he gets his, like, his splash dragon form. Maybe, maybe. Yep. 
in hindsight, it's yeah, it's just you know, it's it's not really the carry. It's just the way this game has gone. I think it was you know the tusk offline kind of thing. It didn't really do anything for them. And um, fifteen minute blood the dual in mid from DC was actually pretty smart. Um, I think it worked out really well. Bloodseeker free farm. They actually got first blood onto Dragonite. I think. Yeah, they did. That was pretty big. And it was like, because uh, they have the Tusk offlane, the Darkstar offlane, they can either like trolling up there and try and make sure he doesn't get anything, or they just go dual lanes and just say, okay, Darkstar, you're going to get a little bit, but we're going to mess up your mid lane. And the trade really worked out for them. Okay, so is Maelstrom really the thing for a Bloodseeker? Yeah, yeah, definitely. The Mjolnir against Peel the way to go. Oh, true. Uh, yeah. I, I always have um, like Harney's logic in the back of my mind. Whenever like it's, I, I quoted this one last night, and whenever you deal with illusion-based heroes, he always said like just go for the hero itself. Don't try and deal with the illusions. And that's what that was around the same time as like Mjolnir was being picked up to try and deal with things like Naga Siren and such, and the old version of the PL. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I, I I think this build is the, definitely the build on Bloodseeker because he's kind of one of those heroes that just gets in there. Probably helps him with his farm rate as well. You always want something with, to help him with attack speed. Yeah, he's good. It's 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 also like, can you ever really buy a bad item on a Bloodseeker? It's pretty hard. I uh -huh. think. You can even go Dagon, you know, it's good. Hey, Dagon's legit. Dagon's fully legit. But that's also something which I learned a long time ago from Jacob, from Elk. He always enjoyed playing with his, uh, with his Dagon Bloodseeker. Sure. All right. So we got smoke from DC. They're looking towards. They're gonna get a ward up, I think. Yeah. Or he's got a ward. It's already a sentry here from. Yeah, I know. I want to see the odds, but now smoke breaks. Bulba. Gets the vision, hook shots instantly into the DK, he'll pop off his dragon form, TC, he's gonna rupture over on the dark side, so no running away from this one, but they snowball in for the walrus, punching Bulba, the shallow grave, the only thing keeping him alive, they still get through Brax, but Darkseer also drops Bulba, living by the skin of his teeth, able to actually have timed the bottle up and survive, the PL even dies to water, solo killing him up. Oh, things have just gone from bad to worse, it's 9-1, this... Digital <laughs> chaos, man. And doesn't know what to do. What Too much chaos. Okay, what is the difference between the series that you cast yesterday and, th and this series today? What is Digital Chaos doing differently against Cloud9? Um... What's happening? <laughs> How is it disconnected? I think they actually have a game plan, this game. And that's nice, they have some direction. Um, you know, they're, they're smoking, they're going for objectives, they're... So it's, it's just, like, is it, is it the teething thing we were talking about before? Where a team's they just gonna find, like, like what makes Maybe. them a team? I don't know, they just, like, manage the laning phase much better. And, you know, you can only lose to a team so many times, right, before you beat them. True. So, United's you know, probably like, okay, we'll just go in and play our game. Fine. And then, you know, DC's, like, trying to figure out different ways to beat them. And if, it's know, such a huge game to win works. over them, though. Like, this takes C9 out of ESL 1 New York. Yeah, but to be fair, you know, they... Uh, I think the the Singapore tournament's also you know relatively the same size, if not bigger, than ESL. And um, actually, no, I think what is ESL 250? Yeah. Okay, so it's, the Singapore tournament's similar in size, a little bit smaller, but it's still you know a huge tournament for them, and they you know they beat them 3-0 there yesterday. So yeah. Well. Each team good exposure. For it's 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 good. It's good. Um, yeah, you're you about to say good exposure for the American team, weren't you? Yeah, two two different teams going to two major lands. Yeah. So. It, it's good for the teams too because they can focus. They can focus on one land as opposed to having to do like multiple lands. So they can make sure they go in there and 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 prove the fact they deserve to be there. Of course, this is only the first step. For DC, really if they do win left. this, this is still the quarterfinals only, and there's some yeah, good but... American teams left. True, but some people think that this is these are the two best teams in there, including I think I think that as well. I haven't seen the other teams play, but I'm still waiting for the team with the stupidest name in the world, the High Council of Wizards and Priests. Uh, yeah, the Mason team. The Mason I'm a team. personal, a big, uh, a big fan of Boreal esports. 
So. Oh, well, they they didn't have a, a great day a great day yesterday. They actually had a real rough day yesterday. But they made it. They survived. They did. They made it two one. That's all that matters. Only really just. Like the, the, that series was one of the like the craziest series ever. I still don't understand half of what happened during those games, just because it defies logic. Yeah, I didn't watch it too closely, but I was glad to see them win. You you should you should check out. I think it was game three. Yeah, game three and uh, and Shibby Storm Spirit. Incoming. It was it was fun. It was definitely fun to say the least. That was that was also the game one where you don't want to look at Jenkins' game. That was his Earthshaker game in the series. Pull tilt mode. Alright, so... After reliving memories. Uh, looks like tier 1 towers going to be pressured again. Hard 9 aren't exposing themselves too much. And in fact, oh, they uh, found the PL. It was out the side farming, no doppelganger, but the paralyzing cast going to be good. Into the death wall, but 1437 again oh, getting stunned up in the back wall from MSS. Absolutely perfect. They even get the kill over on the Radiant Courier. All right, this is going both ways. Water's gonna jump himself away, burns the Aegis of the Immortal, and Brax has the Blink Dagger up and running, gets a stun over on that Dazzle. He'll still get Shell Grave off, but he will not be able to survive this. One quick burst heals, that's all he can do. Down for the count. Now it's Cloud Nine's turn to attack into the tower, or is it? TC behind them starts with the Blood Right. Cleans up a little bit of what was there for Cloud9 and actually makes them pull back. They can't finish the tower push. Yeah, I actually didn't realize Storm had Aegis there, and that like I was like, well, <laughs> this is going so bad. But luckily he had the Aegis and it turned like what was a, like a really bad fight into like you know not too bad of a fight. But definitely not optimal. They had to chase the PL a little bit longer than they wanted to there. It shows that Cloud9 has the ability to fight more than anything else, Storm. Uh, yeah, not enough mana for water. She came in a long way. If they can get close enough to snowball in after him, he's got no mana to speak of, so the shards can make him run around. There's a lot more support behind him with AUI still there. It's just Tusk and Witch Doctor, though. I don't think they can kill him. Yeah. Another Witch Doctor ulti as well, the 1437 can't channel for longer than, like, I think he only lasted a second before he gets interrupted. Yeah, Orchid now. Pretty quick, pretty quick. <laughs> um, let's see. Kill. Is going Mansa first, I think. Oh, they're coming. Ball, but gets the hook shot. One, four, three, seven. Gonna cog push him back. I mean, he keeps chasing up. The blade mail's already been activated, and TC wants to have a play at this. One, four, three, seven gets the mech charge. TC, only 465 movement speed. Only. He'll get a little bit more now that one, four, three, seven gets hit by the orb. He's up to five, three, three. The uh, PL actually went S and Y. That was on the courier, but the Sage died. Really weird build. Huh? Um, why, why would you go SMY? Like, Mana Style makes sense when you go BTs, because that's what enables Flip Push, right? Uh, I think Mana Style is more for, like, removing all the silence that's in this game. Which he won't have. He's not going to be able to take off Orchid or Skyro Silence until he gets a, uh, Fusel. Mm. He's a long ways from that. Uh, it just seems really... It's, it's really it, odd. Just Ritsu things, man. Does his own thing. Well, I suppose in some ways you got to respect that. Uh, in, a, in other ways, you just try and theory craft it and say, well, okay, does does this really gain you anything, or is this just, like, stubbornness in builds? Uh, you know, I, I'm not a PL player myself, but, you know, if he thinks it's the best item, then, you know, he thinks it's the best Dyer's item. Middle tower is under That's kind of my on it all. Alright, I apologize for people on the local recording. Um... So, if you're watching our YouTube channel, welcome back. This will now be part two of your VOD. So, we just had our recording stop for a moment. For everyone, everyone on the live stream, you wouldn't have noticed anything at all. Only for the YouTube audience. Okay, right. yeah, so I think DC will just kind of hang back and wait for their BKB on Bloodseeker. It's actually pretty hard to fight into C9 right now with that Darkseer Dragonite. Yep. I kind of like this new hill sign that they made in Reborn, where water is at the moment. So you've actually got, like, space to work around with this. Oh, really? I didn't even notice that. Uh, there, there's these little things where they've they've modified yeah. the map. You ward up there? I, I would believe so. I believe like... you might even be able to skewer heroes up into there. Considering Storm Spirit stuck, stuck there, you got another skewer position. 
Yeah, I think he killed the. I think there were a whole set of trees there, though. Yeah, there was. Killed. There was. When he, when he jumped up, he took him out. Gotcha. What if you like park a sand king up there and somebody tries to push your tier one and. Bye. Yeah. I don't know if you can get up a little bit higher because there's this little crevice up here. Oh, well. I doubt that. Probably not. <laughs> he would look a little odd. Maybe Batrider could get himself stuck up there at one yeah. point. Yeah. Get more lockdown. Just get that, that stun control. The PL's about to complete up his diffuser blade. Burn through the mana pool of the Storm Spirit. It's not easy. Yeah, it's, it's not easy he, when he's he, got 1500. If he had he Mantra that. Illusions, he could be quicker. I guess that's why it makes him a little tank here. Nice. Maybe, maybe that is his thought. Like, he's just looking at it going, I need to be able to survive until the Orchid wears off. Or, I need to be able to survive with Rupture. It's a little bit more tankability, but could you also achieve the same thing by picking up like Vlad's and just standing your ground up against a PL or Vlad's PL? Mm. I don't know. You have a big believer know. in Vlad's PL? I always seen him pubs. Top cap measure for for a PL so he could just farm. I always thought that was like old PL build because like, you know your illusions lasted so much longer and they would duplicate themselves and mm. just push lanes really. There was actually a there was a Southeast Asian team that experimented out. I, I can't remember if it, was, if it was actually MVP that did it, uh, but they ran Mask of Madness on a Phantom Lancer. Oh man, yeah. It it sounds really stupid, but uh, does it does sound? <laughs> <laughs> but but he, won, right? he got a lot of space. He got a lot of space, so he was he was moving in through the dire jungle and just like legging it everywhere. It yeah, was... he probably ran. He probably ran really fast. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And he made illusions nice and quick. But when it came to team fight, oh my god, it was terrible. <laughs> he couldn't team fight. It was a pure split push belt. That's all it was. Alright, so DC. They want to try and have a, have a crack at bot. They're being watched very closely. This observer was in a great position for Cloud9. So they see everything that uh, DC's preparing, including Bulbous hook angle. So they're just letting it go. Like, MSS is a TP scroll. He wants to keep farming. PL is uh, also doing the same thing. He's got, he's got BT, so we can come. And there's no reason to actually. They just let the tier 2 tower drop. They just keep farming until the time is right to fight. Still not seeing Anthony coming in for 1437. Uh, this Aghanim Scepter Dream is exactly that a dream. He's the lowest net worth at 1.8k. The nearest to him is 4.5 on the Tuscar. This is the proper 6th position, Witch Doctor. Yeah, he's not doing very well. That's a Max Maldic, which is, I've personally never done, but... Poor Bulba. Just... He missed the hook shot. He almost actually caught out 1437. Uh, not one. Uh, the, the PL that he TP'd out. Oh, wow. Yeah. That would've been huge. Uh, but he just missed it, so uh, no cancelling of the TP. But you, you don't like the Max Maldic? Um, uh, I don't know. I've never I've never really done it. I, I've always been a fan of just, like, stun and heal or stats. It's just really hard to like enter a team fight and like actually cast Maldic for the most part. It's it's okay versus Clockwork though, because Clock's generally just always in there. It's pretty yeah. easy to put on him. Heroes smoke Roche play. They don't see it. Where's that? Bulba has a rocket and in fact the ping just came out from uh, from TC. It's like, okay they're all missing, something's gonna be happening here. The sigil's down and they're halfway through Roshan, but that Clockwork rocket still hasn't flown in yet. Uh, it just flew. They, they sent it bottom. Okay, that's know. that's not going to help because they don't get vision. They've, they've got it. They've got Roshan. They'll have the agency model here. Cloud nine. They get away with murder. The rocket flies in, but it's all too late. We've done stun, so they're going to start losing armor. But if DC commits into this, they're, they're fighting up against an Aegis team that haven't had to expend any real abilities or life to take Roshan. Oh man, that was such a risky play by C9, but it worked out. So. But what do they do now? Like, you got Nagus Demodal on PL. Do so you just say, you know what, we force the team fight when we get Dragon Form back up in 68 seconds? Get the fight, you just gotta make sure this Dragonite doesn't kill someone. Like, stun. So you're still happy to see a fight happen without Dragon Form? Sure, Bloodseeker has EKB, so... Bring up for a... they have a secondary smoke? Oh, oh, I meant DC could fight. I mean, C9 should obviously okay. wait for Dragon Form. Oh, yeah. Darkseer is super farm too. 
the Midas trying to kick in. Looks like he's building. Is he going in full? This could be a casual Clark. But I think it probably is. Like I'm almost wondering, like that maybe this is another item, which we can we can ask a question mark on. Like whatever happened to pipe? Like there's a lot of magical damage coming out from DC in this game. Can can you it, it validate can buying case. a pipe? I don't think so. I think hex is probably the way to go for him, just to deal with the star spirit. As opposed to just making like that big five man ball that can push forward with resistance. They, you well, just, that's you, true. They could they could try and force it with the pipe, I guess, but not sure they need that to be successful. Might be better. Well, for now, they are in a position where they can push into a tier two tower. DC aren't looking to uh, looking to defend this yet. Can, but they're still farming up. Like this storm spirit, uh, he bought a Shiva's guard recipe. So in 300 gold, he'll be able to pick up that full Shivas. Zip. This storm yeah, is so difficult rich. to kill. The PL is also getting a lot of farm. He's up to 3.6k gold on this Phantom Lancer now. He's going to be a problem, but once Storm gets to Shivas, it'll be a lot easier to like kind of find which kill is the real one. And then maybe Bloodseeker can focus him down. Yep. Plus Bloodseeker doesn't get controlled. Long jump down to bottom lane. And poor little Brax, the DK. Said he might be a burden. That's picked up pretty pretty quick, easily by DC. Still got a blink stun, and he managed to get his BKB, so probably be useful. He's just gonna be alive when the fight begins. The only the only catch. Wondry too if, if he can blink, because if Water does that early jump in with the Shivas. You have to have really good positioning. It's like now DC, they are going to just push the, the tier 2 tower. The PL's not pushing fast enough that he'll be able to get that tier 2 tower in trade. There's fortification for both sides, so there's no advantage from that side either. There's no way Cloud9 want to come near that Storm Spirit. So yeah, they just let it go. And PL's already TPing back to base. DC have had enough. The DK is coming back to life again. Why risk it? You don't have to fight into that Aegis of the Immortal. I'll tell you how long it's got, but our Roshan timer is bugged. Okay, now we know. So 1 minute 30 seconds. Perfect time for that pop-up. Volvo, please fix Roshan. Pretty late SMY my for TC. It's, uh, it's still a really good item on him, though. Gives him, you know, even more movement speed. Some slow for his opponent. Takes him up. Attack speed, but, but at this point, do you just think? I think I I understand that the SMY is a great item, but don't you just worry that you'll be put in a position where you'll have to sell it? No, he's got plenty of slots left, but he does have that Midas, so that is taking up a slot. Um, mm. I'm not sure. I think he'll probably go MKB next, like the eventual butterfly that DL might get. For now. I think it'll be nice. They'll wait for that Aegis to go down the PL and then maybe try and take a team fight. That's it. why it's probably. I'm just wondering if it might be better for the team if he went in for something more like the Assault Kuros. Like, I know you've already got a Dazzle with you. Yeah, I could go Assault Kuros. And they're coming to fight. That's a four man smoke move from DC. They still got the Storm Spirit, but he can TP to the tier 2 tower and just go from there. And with his pressure, he's already applied to the mid. They forced the retreat from 1 4 3 7. So, hook shot. Oh, they found Brax. MSS tried to force off him away so the hookshot wouldn't connect and that means he also hangs, hang, hang around a little bit too long. The TP out won't be in time, Mystic Flare will do the work and Cloud9 getting caught out on the bottom lane trying to just get the hell out of there. DC punished them after a good hookshot from Boulder. Yeah, that was a disaster. Quite literally. Yeah, like, uh, <laughs> so, like half of them got out and then... Half them got out, and then so, uh, there was the no other... way, there was no way to come back and fight. Yeah, then they caught the Volvo caught the Dragonite, and the other two like hesitated. And they were like, "Oh wait, can we help them?" Yeah, but then like they just got caught as well. So and now DC, they can't force buybacks primarily because it's just too low before they respawn, like on the timer. If they can find a pick off there, maybe then they can do so. Street wave is only now just arriving with 10 seconds to go. 
A Radiant Creep Wave to get through, and Fortification as well to help Cloud9. And yep, here it comes. DK back to life again. Are they going to smoke no move zero. out? Yeah, they're going to smoke move out. So four together, the PL. Also TP's back. He sees the man on the front lines, but they find a different target. They find this guy right mage, the Shallow Grave, able to get out in time. But AUI, they're going to back back and three heroes back in again. TC to get snowballed, and then Warrus punched up. Just trying to man mode. He needs to find himself a kill before he'll end up dying, which he will do so underneath the tower. As TC now on the run out, Dazzle, no way to survive this one. You're still going to fuse all charges. In fact, the blink stun, they find Bulbar, and now it's Cloud9's turn to find a great fight. A triple kill for the Phantom Lancer. He only just bought that Scardi and is already up to 2.6k gold, and they saved their bottom racks. Yeah, that was an awful team fight for DC. They, they, it, that fight, you could just see how much worse their like, team fight is than. C9s. Like, C9 didn't even have their uh, Darkseer wall up, and they still just crushed that team fight. So then you ask the question, like, how does DC end this? Like, if, if, they, can't, well, if they can't force the fight into a tier 3 tower, then they're gonna get out split pushed. Yeah, potentially, but, I mean, it's on that last team fight, they just, they got the initiation. And, yep. and on the last fight, C9 got the initiation, so things didn't work out. So DC, look for the picks and just try and keep C9 in the grave longer? Yeah, look for the picks, get your Roshans, get your Aegis on Storm Spirit, and then... Then you could probably win a team fight, I would imagine. But they can't let it go on for too much longer. Or especially, they can't let another team fight like that happen. Yeah, 1437, while he may not have any kills, he's sitting just shy of 2,000 gold. And actually, he's going to buy the Glimmer Cape. He's giving up on, on getting that... Well, he never even started. But yep. he's not going to go for the axe. Dream is over. <laughs> or at least it's, it's delayed until he gets himself a rampage. Back oh, of a level sure. 2 death ward. <laughs> a rampage? <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of kills. That is. A lot, of, a lot of kills to steal as well with 5 million PL illusions battling. PL, uh... We do have to start looking at his next item too. So he's got BT's Diffuser Blade. Bottle and a ring of a quill to be replaced sometime soon. You were calling out the butterfly. Yeah, I'm for uh, Bill. Yeah. Yeah, he might not even go it. I'm not sure. For Scotty, which I think is, is actually probably a way better item. I didn't even think about that. A lot of survivability from it. Mercury is making the trip up now. Maybe this is also the time the PLS is not looking at some damage output. Because they did take a while before they killed off the Bloodseeker. So he's, he spends his money and it's a talisman of evasion. He's actually still going to go for the Butterfly. Yeah, I mean, it still gives some damage. And it makes life harder. Because that, that does force Bloodseeker into, a, into that Monkey King bar. Yeah, and he's not really close to it. It makes it difficult for the, for the rest of uh, DC. Because the only physical damage they've really got comes from Bloodseeker. So if TC gets burst down at the start of a fight or, or troll. There's not much more for DC to keep the fight going with. Yeah, they got some they have some serious PL problems. But I'm kinda liking United's you know, lineup at this point. I think their team fight is just too much. DC could split push, you know, Storm's very good at split pushing and Maybe they could force United into like an awkward engagement around the Roche pit or something. At the moment, Cloud9. They're five man group up. Where are they going? Okay, they're just getting the hell out. PL's got found again in middle lane. DC aren't giving them the vision. So they don't know if they can go out for any of these fights up against DC. But Roshan spawns up in like 30 seconds' time anyway, so. DC will pop in for that. It's Rosh. It's probably the downside about, uh, about Cloud9's draft the fact that they can't just scout out Roshan. If they are going to try and contest that, they'll have to either smoke in close or you got to blink the short distance can... over. Send a sigil. Oh, that's true. You got a Tuscar sigil. Something. Yeah. You can also get picked off before it gets in, then you got no sigil for the fight. But it's better than losing Roshan, but they've got no choice now. They've lost Roshan. So this is also the third Roshan. Agates and Cheese available. 
So they're gonna put the cheese on the TC. And Storm, well, there's a long jump in. Bob, we've got the hook shot. 437 is gonna go and water deeper after MSS. The blade mill's up from Bob, but no one wants to attack him. It's the glimmer cape. It's allowing Darks here just to run away. So they lose their witch doctor. Uh, could have been a lot worse. And the PL's yeah. already starting to split push. Even worse. Uh, I felt like you were looking for an upside there. There, was, there really wasn't an upside. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you always try and do, man. You gotta try and remain positive doctor. until the bitter well, end. Uh, no, it's pretty much all that happened. They just lost their wish doctor. Yeah. yeah. DC got Roche, Aegis on Storm, he's almost got a Lincoln Sphere. That cheese on, on TC is gonna make life so much harder for him. Yeah, it's nice. Cheese versus uh, PL, you know, you lose all your mana. Get yep. it back. Even the life, like they try and kill up TC, they bring him close, they just triggers the cheese, or he gets a kill. Yeah. Huge I do amount hope of... he gets that AC you talked about. That item will be very helpful for like pushing down buildings. Yeah. They don't really have the greatest like, tower push. But if you had an AC, you know, makes things a lot easier. Yep. PL's being very elusive on this top lane. Now AUI reveals himself, and well, PL actually backs up. You must think that AUI is not alone. To do such a thing. Yeah. Well, Storm can fly in from anywhere, so. That's true. And he's not far away. I still find that crazy that Storm can basically travel the entire length of the map. What a hero. He <laughs> Legit pick. Like, this hero is Dota. Almost as much as Techies is. Yeah, but, I mean, look at C9's lineup. They didn't really pick any disables. They have Dragonite, and, like, Witch Doctor, Cask, but that's. You can't really count that versus Storm Spirit, because you can easily yep. dodge it. And then they have, like, a Tusk, Snowball, or Punch. Like, it's not really very good lockdown, so. They even... Sure, maybe, like, Storm seems like a really strong hero this game, but they also. They didn't really pick any good heroes against Storm. Even though Scythe Advice, you were asking for Darkseid, like, he, he, he got Shivas, like. He got Shivas yeah. and Assault Cure Us coming. Yeah, it's, there's no. There's no lockdown, there's no disable. There's no. Like. Okay, is PL actually saving for buyback too? Yeah, he might be doing that. May as well just yolo it. He's gonna okay, he's gonna nah, pick up the eagle song. He's gonna have it for this fight. But he Dragon needs he needs to basically back. have an abyssal blade to make this work. Oh. Yeah, that could be a sixth item. But at the same time now you get a butterfly over on the over on the Bloodseeker, so we can have the never ending battle of people that can't hit things. Uh, DC, they really like. How do you, how do you even take how do you even get your creep wave up onto the high ground? You got paralyzing cast, shards, breathe fire, potential iron shell and lance spam. Even keeping a creep wave alive as you come to the tier three tower is impossible, which means then your heroes have to start tanking for you. Uh, this will help him. Oscar jump up. However, he didn't get the right PL. PL just doppelgangers himself away. Yeah. So just watching this middle lane just die. Bryce just wants to breathe. Yep. Can't get close. It's almost like uh, I'm gonna bring up a hero. You probably haven't heard his name in a while. Uh, but Elder Titan. Yeah. When Elder He's Titan. Pretty good versus PL. We were able just to send the spirit out. <laughs> the only issue is his lighting phase, but send your spirit out, yeah. you stomp it out, and no one can come close. And then you had like, it was uh, it was the build, the uh, the drop that Miracle used to go for. We go this Naga Siren as well as ET. So Radiance yeah. on Naga and then Spirit Spam out. The Creep Waves would actually die at the river. Mid river. Never be able to push. Yep. That's actually what it turned into. And then Naga just farms six slots and then you win. Hmm. Well, yeah, she had an ET game last night. I know, I saw Chapman's was playing it. <laughs> you, you actually watched that one? Yeah, I saw some of it. Uh, what, what went wrong? <laughs> I don't know. I, I honestly didn't watch it very closely. I was like in between that and the C9 DC games. I know Rio was Rio was saying most of the time it's just like he can't get a combo off. Like the biggest problem for ET, he just cannot get a combo off. Yeah, maybe in that game it was. I'm not sure. It's I don't think the hero's too awful, but he's you know Jeffens is the kind of guy that like likes to play like random heroes. Like he he loves to play those heroes that just aren't popular in the meta just for the fact that you know he different or like wants to be unique or well it was definitely different and unique yeah i would have just preferred to see a bit of combo with it i, yeah, I actually like the old the older combo when you ran uh sniper with elder Shut titan away. like that was the old cis combo that they did or ti 
Yeah, just before TI4, they, uh, they were running that. Alright, so what's going on? We got the Aegis for... Aegis is gone now. Yep. No more Aegis, but you still got the cheese over on TC. You got a courier making the run up. They're, they're trying to finish up the Shiva's guard. Got a slower crest on a Dazzle. Yeah, they're just missing, uh, I think Vlad's AC. Or, like, Vlad's on Skyrath or Dazzle, and then AC on Bloodseeker, and I think they can just go high ground. Uh, I, I'm still skeptical about it. Still don't know if they can keep a creep wave, and when TC walks in... Okay, break smoke, the hook shot's gonna come on 1437. they He'll be the first one down, Glimmer Cape unable to save, and MSS also caught out. This is the dream now for TC. Uh, he's just gonna run himself forward. And they'll take out three heroes. Actually, the Storm Spirit got the kill, so DC, he wanted a good opening. All they need is a creep wave and they can go. No buybacks for all three of these heroes, and DK jumps out. They at least want some collateral kill over on AUI and Bulba. Hook shots in again. The BKB from Brax will protect them. They got no stuns to actually penetrate that immunity. And they needed just a TP out to get his life back again. DC, what a time. Actually, I, I seriously thought Cloud9 uh, were going to blow like the DC gank there. When the smoke broke... Uh, you see the they just weren't ready. Huh? Really smart jump. They got... They, they they brought down Darks here before he was able to get like anything off. And same with same for the Witch Doctor. Um, Force the buyback from Darks here. I can just back off, get their next set of items. Maybe an Aegis. And go win the game. You see so maneuverable as well. Like, AUI is probably, well, I say, AUI, he's actually not the slowest, but that will be the dazzle. But having Cork, Bloodseeker, and Storm Spirit, Cork yeah. can always get to the fight so quickly. They're so, very mobile. Uh, so when they find those opportunities, they can really capitalize. Capitalize. Done. Manda, Manda is finally done for the PL. He's actually buying a 46 minute Manda Star. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe he's finally sick of getting silenced. That's probably it. Well, let's be honest. So he, he disassembles the SMY, so he's still got the sound. Sure. But he'll get rid of this one later. Yeah, he just doesn't have the gold right now. Yeah. He actually doesn't have buyback either. Short by 900. But having the mana cell, he can finally do what you're looking for before. Do this split push. Yeah, his illusions last a little bit longer than the Mantis. It kind of it kind of is the the way to get back to what PL used to be. Kind of, yeah. Still very different though. Illusions used to last so long. They used to have like radiances on them. Oh blink up. They found TC. Aurora's punch as well. Hookshot's gonna come in. So you have to commit death one TC. Yes. Triggers the cheese and look at the time for water to come in with the Shiva's guard. One four three seven. TC just mopped him up. A triple kill with a perfect blood right, and he's still got rupture available. But he'll end up going down after triggering it. The PL just wants to TP himself back out to safety. Able to do so, but the DK will not be so lucky. Bulba just hookshot chases after him. And Cloud9 lose four. And they're probably about to lose mid racks. No buybacks on any of those heroes. PL actually spent his money. He, uh, he bought a basher at this point. Yeah, he's all in for the defense. He's coming. Bulba wants a nice hook line. Very easy to notice which one of the two mana illusions. They're chasing up. Trying to burn off a little bit of the mana comp, make enough replicates though. Even using Doppelganger to send in more illusions. This also means that the Storm Spirit initiates, there's no mana style to break out of the... out of the Orchid. Roshan's up. And Storm goes in. <laughs> Who cares about Roshan if you can win the game? They're going after Tuska, and uh, well... Orchid it up, but it's not enough damage to get the kill. Limmer Cape giving him that cover to get out. It wasn't the full cover considering the gem is still on the Storm Spirit, but... At least gives him some resistance. And they are moving for Roshan now. And this just looks like it's in the bag for DC. Are these two teams ever destined to get whitewashes against each other? 2-0, 2-0, or 2-0, 3-0, now 2-0. I don't know, man. Seems like DC brought their A game today. They really did. Some of these hookshots from Bulba though have been so damn good.
And Ward has control of the Storm Spirit. It runs in the family, man. <laughs> they start, dr they start drinking genetic. that water they they serve at their house. Yeah. Do it. Maybe it's the, may, I wonder if uh, he also uses a neck pillow. Matt, that's a good question. Mm. We need to find out. Like it's it's environmental training. There's got to be something that makes a great storm player. So, okay, we're good to go. Killing off for Sean. Uh, there should be no delay as well coming into our next game. Uh, the wonderful boys from Fire and Root, they are our next game coming up. Uh, the guys have agreed to play earlier, so if we do end 2-0, uh, both teams are ready to go directly after, so you, you won't have your delay like we've had over our previous nights. And actually, we're almost at the official starting time anyway. We're 40 minutes away from official starting time. Depending how long we get this game goes, we may still remain on schedule. And see, here comes DC. Uh, DC. Middle lane will push itself, obviously. Cloud9, this is their time. They have to get the best defense ever. Try and keep themselves alive in this game. PL still waiting around mid lane. He's hoping for Bulba to come in as she throws out one of the lances just to harass Bulba down. Bulba's fine with this. He's still got a good mana pool. The only problem is he can't get a good hookshot line, but that doesn't matter when Water jumps in. The Witch Doctor, he doesn't have enough to survive. The Blood Rise in the perfect position. The Storm's already found the kill. The Wall, well, it's not in a bad position, but they link its fear up on TC. They've got no way to kill off the Blood Seeker now. Rumps over on the Dragon Knight, losing the Tuscar back in the trees. I think this is over, PPD. You might get a great back into a wall, and the PL's getting more of himself. But TC, actually, they lose Bulba as well, but the PL is the last man standing. And the Aegis Immortal is also still on this Storm Spread. He may not have mana to speak of. But one man defending against three. PL enough. He's actually burning off so much mana. Dazzle and Skyrath can't do anything. Water almost wants to die, so he's got mana to play with here. Clockwork buys back and uh, hook shots in. Cog push back on the PL. They really want this kill. And he didn't get lucky on the doppelganger. Actually got himself straight next to one of the cogs. Tries to run it off. Moves into our AUI. He's down but has buyback. 100 seconds. We had 50 seconds into his next death timer. But it's, it's now or never. You play to keep your bottom racks alive. This is a dieback. Then it's over. The melee racks is down. The range racks will follow. Cloud9, can they even get some exit kills? Look like it. DC's backing out with high armor. No way for Cloud9 to chase. This was not the dream of Cloud9. Thought for a moment with the Dark Sea of Vakwal that they may have actually had the, the, the opening. Yeah, it was looking like a pretty good fight, but they're just so far behind. Economy makes them lose, man. They really are so far behind, too. 27,000 net worth behind. 28k on the experience. Considering that fight was as close as it was, they did pretty well. And now Bulba. He finds some friends. Has a haste during though, so he's gonna leave those friends. Incoming! Whereas he's always got Storm Spirit around the corner. Storm's got 26 Bloodstone charges. Long jump down. He's got the gem, so 1437 is dead. They hook shot down. Actually, he doesn't have the gem. He has the Aegis Immortal. Going the gem for them now. Dazzler's not TC, it's AUI. And Storm Spirit's ready to actually die and then TP back. He bought BTs. He actually gave up his boots. So they're sitting back in his stash so he can hold on to the Aegis the Immortal. Nice. 27 Bloodstone charges. Yeah, he dies twice, responds instantly, picks up his boots to travel. Yep. Comes back in. And here we go. And he actually forces the BKB out from Brax Ball, but gets a good hook shot, and they isolate MSS. So no Dark Sea of Vac Wall. He got Orchid up, hence he couldn't go for that combo. And even the PL, he brings Dazzle down low, but the Shallow Grave and Glimmer Cape allows him to escape even AUI, dealing with the illusions. And they do burn through Storm Spirit, but in DC know it's a means to an end. Yeah, you lose the Storm Spirit, you're about to lose AUI as well. But it's all try to, trying to force the abilities out from uh, from Cloud9. And as she forced our forward Storm Spirit jumping out, and MSS blows the Darkseer wall. They might be able to blow up the Dazzle as well. 
Blink's on cooldown for the moment, the jump in, and Kuri is actually delivering it. It's delivering in the Aghanim Scepter over towards the Dazzle halfway through this fight. The Skywrath Mage will die. Witch Doctor gets a huge chunk of money for that. They're still so crippled on their side lane and mid. Fight didn't go very well for DC. It looked like DC didn't look like they wanted to fight. And then they still had like these two heroes staying behind thinking that maybe they can fight. That was weird. That was really, I think it was just like a really sloppy fight. They're just being lazy because like, oh, we've already won and Storm has like four lives. Let's just send them in. But yeah, they can't get cocky like that. Now this Abyssal Blade could be up for PL fairly soon. Radiance Courier. In fact, actually, what did he? He, he bought a Demon Edge. And then the Radiant Courier got killed instantly after. Why do you buy a Demon Edge? I don't know. Braxis? I think it was Braxis. It's, uh... No. It's definitely the PL's Demon Edge. Oh, it is. Oh, it had to be a misclick. He, he, he must have wanted to buy, uh, buy the Relic. Yeah. It, ma it makes no sense to go for a Demon Edge. Unless he's designed to send, sell the Basher. Pick up... Yeah. Uh, the uh, Monkey King bar. That's the other choice. Yeah, let's give him the better for the doubt. Let's say he was going for the MKB. Okay. If not, well, he may just do it anyway. He'll have yeah, the money for it uh, once he sells the Basher. Curry's dead anyways. Yeah, so he has to wait. Alright, so... Cloud9. Fence again. If the Dark Sea wall back off cooldown, because it took him so long to attack this, is water. Very aggressive jump in, but he knows he can't just get instantly blink and stunned because of that Lincoln Sphere of his. So he feels very safe going for such a place. But if things get really bad anyway, you'll have a, you'll have a hookshot in from Bulba. Or Dazzle can... Well, he might be able to get in range for a Shallow Grave. Now he starts to weave up. Look at that armor on the Storm, though. So high, he's actually got over 50 armor as he dives all the way down to the bottom lane. Also, the glimmer out from MSS, it's just distraction. The top rack is the only thing that really matters now for C9. Between themselves and Megas, that's what they're gonna stop for TC. BKB to attack the rack. Water's coming in on the back end, he's trying to attack into MSS, and TC actually losing a lot of life very quickly. He'll still kill off the racks. The suicide was there from the Storm Spirit. Brought TC back up again so quickly. But it's Megas now in favor of DC. They need that final nail in the coffin. C9's only got the one foot in the grave at the moment. Mega creeps. I think that's the game, right? It should be. It should be. But I'm should. still I'm still seeing a farmed up PL. Definitely farmed. And Storm is running low on bloodstone charges. He's down to 12, 12 charges now. I say low at 12. Uh, <laughs> But he is at least coming down in the charges. There's that Vlad's you were finally asked. The Mega Creeps are going to cause so many issues for them anyway. Yeah, the thing is, I think like all of DC will have buybacks, so they got to win like you know two or three team fights while dealing with Mega Creeps. Unless DC get overconfident and start spending more money. Because the only ones with buyback right now is Storm and, as well as Bloodseeker. Clocks is still on oh. cooldown, any short of money. Yeah, Skyrath and Dazzler are both really close though. Most part. Now, what did he? What else did he drop? Who? PL. Hey, S and Y. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Yes, the S and Y. Ha <laughs> uh, ha. Got the item. So now we get, actually can have a Monkey King bar as well as the full the full Abyssal Blade. But he can't have buyback if you buy such a thing. Yeah, it's buyback cooldown is coming up. And they really need to have two PLs. If they win the fight, having two PLs means they may even be able to like properly take a rack or go for a GG push. Just not getting that much money. Mega creeps are worth so little. Which means DC's like efficiency farming is so damn good. A little uh, cocky ball to TP back out. The Roshan's up in 45 seconds. This isn't really a big thing for DC. It's like. What are they? Oh, not again. When did they lose it this time? Okay, it was it was in the middle of the lane on top. I'm not quite sure what it was doing there. It was right on top of the tier 1 tower, or where it used to be.
Alright. Let's see, let's see. Gonna get another Roshan? Probably gonna wait for that, yeah. But it, it doesn't really help, DC. Like, it would, oh, help, it would help C9 so much more if they could, like, smoke into it. Yeah, but I think they'll probably just throw it on their supports or someone. I don't know, their supports are like 6 slotted too, so... There he is. Everyone's basically full. Bulba could take it. Like, he could drop that bomb oh, at least carry. They might, they might do the same thing they did last time and um, stash Storm of Spots mm -hmm. and just let him carry the Aegis. Yeah, that's definitely what they're gonna do. I should get him. <laughs> you know you've got way too much money when you buy a Moonshot over on a Storm Spirit. Oh, that's nice. Immortality Alright, so they put the Aegis Immortal on the Storm Spirit. Curry took his, his BTs back again, so we're, we're back into the same situation. Die, you respawn, you, you pick up your BTs, you come straight back again. But it, won't be, it won't be an instant respawn, but he does have enough money for a buyback, so that can make it instant. And the DK, well that's a late game item. He built an armor at 60 minutes <laughs> in. Yeah, he's like, what What can I buy with uh, 3k gold that's gonna help me here? <laughs> Buyback on cooldown, to pull that in 6 seconds time. Maybe that's the armor they're then searching for to finish this. Yeah, they group up, there goes your Aghanim's weave. And they jump in, they go after Brax with the Mystic Flare as well. Brax won't be able to survive, no buyback, that's 83 seconds on the sideline. And with also the Witch Doctor joining in, they're about to have another one. This PL... He has to prove that he is more than a man. He has to be able to kill off the entire DT lineup almost single-handedly. MSS is at least back with a nice wall, but... He's just hitting the buildings. Yeah. They're trying to finish the game. PT, wow, where's your life? It's more of it. He doesn't have cheese. And Saki knows that he's trying to chase after him, but he's not getting close enough for it. And actually get the Walrus Punch over into AUI. It's chasing after more. The lens will flying out, but Doppelganger... Uh, ...gets TL away from water. He's dropping the cheese on the ground. Wait, Wet's uh, he's coming in for the tier 4 towers. This PL is still man it. They're trying to find more. The Soap will be the only thing that can pr protect the Tusker. He can't blink himself away and they back and back into the wall. The fortress is exposed. They've caught that fortification to buy a little bit more time, but there's no more time. The PL can't. But the game will be over. And it will be Cloud9 eliminated from ESL1 as DC. They only claim one victory for the first time against Cloud9, they make it a doubler. 2-0. There you go. Back. And they really did it. We'll have ourselves a break. Grab yourself a beverage, everyone. We'll be back as we'll have our final series of the night. It will be Fire going up against Rude to see who will actually advance and uh, play up against Digital Chaos because they are the ones, first ones into the semi-finals. We are down to seven teams now for our North American qualifier. We already had Fnatic qualify in through the SEA qualifier. Vega were over the top of NIP in the European qualifier, taking out such teams as Team Empire as well as Na'Vi. And, uh, well, US qualifier is kind of our, our last port of call next to the Chinese qualifier which will begin later in this week. Keep your eyes peeled.